industries um, through the Dutch as well. Um, but <laughs> um, lovely to see the newborn. You know, George held back his baby, but now we've seen it. it's real. Um, and uh, we need to arrange for a dedication. Uh, Um, anyway, um, today I want to talk about um, something that's most important. All over the world today we're seeing the catastrophe that God's brought in country after country. The leadership's gone down. The Lord spoke to me about the cherubim who are in charge of politics, in charge of the world, and how everything was going to collapse person after person and so it's happened and um, sometimes we forget that the Bible is historical um, and the Bible is important because it shows us how man works or doesn't work um, and corruption is corruption and people aren't prepared to face the truth anymore. When Jesus came to earth and began to preach, he came to his own, that was the Jewish nation, and they received him not. They rejected him. What they didn't like was the truth. And today in churches, um, what we discover is there is no acceptance of truth. In the evangelical church, there's no acceptance of truth. In the charismatic churches mainly there's no acceptance of truth and we need to come back to the simplicity of the gospel where the power of God is displayed not where um, people just dream and so I want to look at how the wrong people get into leadership and why and one of the worst things you can come across is pastors who are disasters and um, that is the judgment of God when he brings the wrong people to be in charge they destroy people they destroy lives and you'll see it all over the world today uh, I'm horrified at what's happening um, because the church is not advancing towards revival. It's advancing towards de destruction. Jesus said, as in the days of Noah. And in the days of Noah, it ended up with eight people being saved in the ark. Everyone else wiped out. And in the, in the truth, there's going to be a remnant saved and the rest will be wiped out. And thank God when the trumpet sounds, we'll be caught up. The dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we that remain will be caught up to meet the Lord in the air. And then we'll ever be with the Lord in a new heaven and a new earth. And the others will fry down here as the whole of creation is burnt up with unquenchable fire. I like that. Uh, you know, will be out of it um, and the idea that Christians are putting over that somehow there's going to be a thousand year rule of Jesus Christ is not in the Bible it's in the imagination of people that he'll come to this earth because first of all he'll never come in the gate of Jerusalem through a graveyard which is what they've purposely built the Muslims and the Jews. That won't happen. Uh, and you need to wake up to the fact there's all kinds of um, people talking about prophecy and what's going to happen and you've got John Hagee with his charts of nonsense he can make money with. Um, and you realize it's not the power of God nor is it the truth of God. I want to follow the Lord Jesus Christ 
um, and we've been looking at um, there's only one way to come into life. You cannot come into life by searching the scripture. And I want to make it quite plain to you, as I did last time, the scriptures, the Bible, especially the majority of translation is not the word of God. It is not the word of God. You want to make that plain. People think they can pick up the Bible, get a verse, and it's the word of God. It is not. It is not the word. Of, it is a record of what Christ said. But it is not what Christ is saying. Uh, he speaks from heaven today. And the evangelicals say, oh no, everything's complete. It's in the Bible. That's the truth. No, it doesn't say that. Um, when that which is perfect has come, that which is in part will be done away. There's only one perfect, and that is Jesus Christ. And he's Lord of Lords and King of Kings. Now he speaks today. It's not a dead letter. The letter killeth. The Bible is the letter. It's a dead letter. It'll kill. And so when people take scriptures and say, oh God... This is what God says, and they repeat it and claim it. It is deception, especially when they complete it because they think they're going to get money and become millionaires. You know, the prosperity gospel is not a gospel. It's from hell. And, and we need to be aware of that. So how come these people came into leadership? How come that churches pick the wrong people. How come, for instance, you know, I, I remember um, meeting leaders of denominations and sitting down with them, you know, and I was amazed. I remember one so-called apostle came to my home. My wife and I sat there and, uh, you know, and so he came and he had dinner with us. And um, when he had dinner with us, we started discussing the scriptures and discussing the things of God. And in the end, he got so angry, he slammed his Bible shut, we were talking about. And he said, it's no good talking to you. You know the Bible too well. And I said, excuse me, you call yourself an apostle. Uh, you don't know the Bible. And I said, you don't know that you need a quickened word from God. Not the natural mind telling you what God says, because the natural man cannot comprehend the things of the Spirit. I find so many young people, they, they think that they have special revelation from God. You don't get special revelation from God unless you're in a relationship with the living God, Jesus Christ, and he speaks from heaven, and you better hear what he's saying. You don't, sometimes God will use and quicken a scripture by the Holy Spirit to a heart, but mainly people just concoct ideas out of their so-called intellect, or they read some book, you know, that someone's written, and they think that's God. Well, let me tell you, unless God has spoken it, and it's up to date, it's not God, it's dead letter, and it'll kill. And there's a lot of people that commit suicide. They go to churches called Citadels of Satan to feed, uh, and they hear death. And so I want to look at one, there's, there's, you know, when, when the children of Israel f fell into trouble, they fell into a, a place where there's a book of judges. And the judges are very interesting because they're men not chosen by God, but chosen by society, chosen by people, and they were voted on. One of them was called Abimelech. And you'll find he was an absolute evil tyrant. 
And he got into power by being voted on. And in the prophetic word, you'll find that Abimelech had one big problem. He murdered everyone else who had a right to authority, his brothers. And not only did he murder them, he missed one, Jothan. And, and there came a problem. But it explains there how leadership is wrong and how you can know the difference. Um, in churches, I find politics, you know, in Elim it was some Welsh gizzard, um, you know, uh, not that, you know, there's anything wrong with the Welsh. It just was he came from such a place, or people that come from Bradford. Uh, power is not vested in a man because he's a political animal. Power is invested by God in individuals, and you'll find there's a difference. And so if you turn with me to Judges chapter 9, I'll just explain it. And if you don't like what the Bible says, you've got to understand that it's a historical book, but there are principles God shows in Scripture, but that does not bring life. It lets you know what death does. How do you kill people? Well, get someone called Abimelech. Abimelech was the son of Zerubbabel. He went to Shechem unto his mother's brethren and communed with them and with all the family of the house of his mother's father, saying, Speak, I pray you, in the ears of all the men of Shechem, whether it is better for you either that all the sons of Jerubbabel, which are threescore and ten persons, reign over you, or that one reign over you. Remember also that I am your bone and your flesh. And his mother's brethren spake of him in the ears of all the men of Shechem, all these words, and their heart inclined to follow Abimelech, for they said, he is our brother. Now here we've got a, a man who's saying, okay, why have three score and ten ruling over you when you could just have one man? Um, cheaper. So they thought. And they gave him three score and ten pieces of silver out of the house of Baal Bereth, wherewith Abimelech hired, a va hired vain and light persons which followed him. You'll always get the vain and light persons, and they'll always be around. I, I don't like it when someone thinks he's a comedian or thinks, you know, he can get vain and light people around him. Woolly woofters and all that. Um, as far as I'm concerned, you have men of integrity, uh, not vain and light people. Is that plain? Uh, you know, a man who can tell jokes and is it's sick. Um, that is not what God intends. You know, the biggest joke is them. Um, and um, he went unto his father's house at Oprah and slew his brethren, the sons of Jerubbabel, being three score and ten persons upon one stone, notwithstanding, yet Jotham the youngest son of Jerubbabel was left, for he hid himself. And all the men of Shechem gathered together, and all the house of Milo, and went and made Abimelech king by the plain of the pillar that um, was in Shechem. 
And when they told it to Jotham, he went and stood in the top of mountain um, Jerusalem and lifted up his voice and cried and said unto them, Hearken unto me, you men of Shechem, that God may hearken <coughs> unto you. <coughs> and then he comes out with a statement. The trees went forth on a time to anoint a king over them. And they said unto the olive tree, Reign thou over us. But the olive tree said unto them, Should I leave my fatness wherewith by me they honour God and man, and go to be promoted over the trees? And the trees said to the fig tree, Come thou and reign over us. But the fig tree said unto them, Should I forsake my sweetness and my good fruit, and go to be promoted over the trees? <coughs> they said, Then said the trees unto the vine, Come thou and reign over us. And the vine said unto them, Should I leave my vine, <coughs> my wine, which cheereth God and man, <coughs> and go to be promoted? over the trees. Then said all the trees <coughs> unto the bramble, Come thou and reign over us. And the bramble said unto the trees, If in truth you anoint me king over you, then come and put your trust in my shadow. And if not, let fire come out of the bramble and devour the cedars of Lebanon. Now therefore, if you have done truly and sincerely in that you have made Abimelech king, and if you have dealt well with Zerubbabel and his house, and have done unto him according to the deserving of his hands, for my father fought for you, and adventured his life far and delivered you out of the hand of Midian and you are risen up against my father's house this day and have slain his sons three score and ten persons upon one stone and have made Abimelech the son of his maidservant king over the men of Shechem because he is your brother. If you then have dealt truly and sincerely with Zerubbabel and with his house this day, then rejoice ye in Abimelech and let him also rejoice in you. But if not, let fire come out from Abimelech and devour the men of Shechem and the house of Milo and let fire come out from the men of Shechem and from the house of Milo and devour Abimelech. And Jotham ran away and fled and went to Beer and dwelt there for fear of Abimelech his brother. When Abimelech had reigned three years over Israel, then God sent an evil spirit between Abimelech and the men of Shechem, and the men of Shechem dealt treacherously with Abimelech. That the cruelty done to the threescore and ten sons of Zerubbabel might come and their blood be laid upon Abimelech, their brother, which slew them, and upon the men of Shechem, which aided him in the killing of his brethren. Now here's a story, it's historical, but it's true. Hey, when people come and they want power, they make promises. They lie. You've only got to watch the politicians lie, um, as they all do. They promise you utopia, and uh, it never comes. They promise that everything will get better and it gets worse. They promise, you know, they're for the poor man. 
and they get rich. Not the poor men, but the people that promise it. Um, in history, your one thing is when people want something and want power and want control, you've got problems. Always problems. And here we have Abimelech, jealous, sees that the sons of Zerubbabel are going to be problems, so he wants to kill them. And he kills them all on one stone chops them apart and then you find out, I like what Jotham said, he, he likens it to an explanation. Um, the, the one thing is this, verse 8, the trees went forth on a time to anoint a king over them and they said unto the olive tree, rain thou over us. But the olive tree said unto them, Should I leave my fatness, wherewith by me they honour God and man, and go to be promoted over the trees? Now here's an olive tree. Why should I leave what I do? And you notice an olive tree produces what? Olives. Olives. And it's fruit, and it honours God and man. And it's so important to understand that you've got to see what's bearing fruit from God, not from man, from God. And here's the olive tree, says, well, you want me to rule over you? No way. I'm not going to leave what I'm called to do, which is olive bears Olive tree bears what? Olives. Should I leave that to go and rule over you? No. So you'll always find that the people who bear fruit aren't seeking power of themselves ever. They have fruit. And as I say, without the power of God, being manifest, you have nothing. And then they come, um, and the trees said to the fig tree, come thou and reign over us. But the fig tree said unto them, should I forsake my sweetness and my good fruit and go to be promoted over the trees? Uh, and here we have a fig tree. Am I going to forsake my sweetness and my good fruit to go to be promoted to reign over you? Hey, a fig tree produces what? Figs. And if you walk around our garden, you'll see the fig trees mm. in the garden. Some people like to go and collect them. And, you know, I've always remembered what figs are. That figs are like missionaries. They you know, when you go and you get them and you eat them, they go down into the deep, dark interiors and cleanse them. And, you know, that's not my idea of, f f f you know, fruit. Um, anyway, there, there's the fig tree. So I'm, I'm not doing it. Okay. And um, then said the trees unto the vine, come thou and reign over us. And the vine said unto them, Should I leave my wine, which cheereth God and man, and go to be promoted over the trees? In other words, hey, a vine tree, a fig tree, an olive tree, has a purpose. The purpose isn't to rule over others. The purpose is to produce the fruit that it produces. And it's good that even in the scriptures it says that wine is for God and man to be cheered by it. And please don't say it's in the Hebrew, it says unfermented, it does not. Um, you know, I, I've found people that talk about unfermented wine as though they're angels. God likes us, a little wine cheereth the heart. 
And that's why so many Christians are miserable, because they think that wine and is, is wrong. But a little wine, now drunkenness is wrong, but a little wine is good for you. And, you know, especially Merlot, uh, when it comes from Chile. Um, okay, now here they are, the, the trees. And you notice that the trees of the forest, they want someone to rule over them. Why? Why don't they allow the people that bear fruit to rule? Because the people that bear fruit and know what their purpose in life is, are happy to bear fruit of them, but they're not interested in abandoning that because you've got to give up what is truly profitable for the nature you have. You won't plant um, a grape tree, a vine, a grapevine, and, and find it'll produce figs. It won't. You won't have a fig tree and get wine from that, and you won't. An olive tree is different. They have a purpose. But always, when people want someone to rule over them, they don't want them to act at, in their nature. What they want them to do is a different purpose. And so he goes on. Then said all the trees unto the bramble, Come thou and reign over us. Now the thing with a bramble is the bramble is not a tree th that you want to sit on. It is not a tree that you need to be near because it will actually tear your skin. It's not... You know, but it has a purpose. Um, if you want to protect your property, have bramble trees all around your property. That'll stop people coming through. Uh, why? Because it produces thorns. And so here come all the trees. So, well, let's have the bramble. We don't want something that produces something that'll bless. What we want is something that has power and control, I want you to reign over us. So, and the bramble said on the trees, if in truth you anoint me king over you and come and put your trust in my shadow, and if not, let fire come out of the bramble and devour the cedars of Lebanon. Hey, there's one thing a bramble bush doesn't do. It doesn't make shadows because it's not it, it's thin it's got bramble bush and, and actually it tears your flesh that doesn't produce fruit and it's not something you want to sit under or sit on um, it's just not the place to be and here's all the trees saying let's have the bramble and then he says, well, you've got to come and sit under my shadow. Now, the seed of the Lebanon wood, uh, it's nice to sit with a fig tree. It's nice to sit with olive trees. It's nice. To, they have production. And they're not going to hurt you. But the bramble? What fruit has it got? Okay. And um, if in truth you anoint me king over you, then come and put your trust in my shadow. If not, let fire come out of the bramble and devour the cedars of Lebanon. Now, therefore, if you have done truly and sincerely in that you have made Abimelech king, and if you have dealt well with Zerubbabel and his house, and have done unto him according to the deserving of his hands, for my father fought for you and adventured his life far and delivered you out of the hand of the Midian. And you are risen up against my father's house this day and have slain his sons, three score and ten persons, upon one stone and have made Abimelech 
the son of his maidservant, king over the men of Shechem, because he is your brother. In other words, watch out. And there's always something to watch out for. Watch out for relatives. You'll find he went to the people of Shechem and he got them on his side. Oh, I'm bone of your bone and flesh of your flesh. They're the people that destroy a church. Um, one thing I always emphasize is God wants you to know that the church is not run by a family. It is not a family business. When I started Penal years ago, I said to my son and my daughters, I said, know this, if you want to go into the ministry, God better call you and God better provide for you because I won't help you one little bit. I said, what I hate when I go to America, it's family business. The church is a full, it's their sons that want to grow up to take over the church. I don't believe in that. I believe in the man who's called of God, who's anointed of God. I said, as far as I'm concerned, you get a good job, you get a good degree, you get a good job, and if God calls you, so be it. He better provide for you. I won't. And that was my attitude. Why? Because I don't like family business. Abimelech, was more interested in getting the support of his family and he killed the sons of Zerubbabel. Three score and ten, he had to get rid of them. Uh, it was evil. And why was it evil? Because people want power. They want someone to reign over them. But they don't want a man who's genuine, producing fruit. They don't want to see the word of God and the truth of God prosper, what they want to do is see someone with power and manipulation. And you don't want to get promoted. You imagine sitting under a bramble bush and picking the fruit off the bramble. That won't be very pleasant. Hmm? You imagine sitting in the sun and thinking, sitting under a bramble bush is a nice place to sit to be protected. You've got to be kidding. And Abimelech was like that. Envy and jealousy. Okay, he wasn't the son of the queen. He was the son of a maidservant. And the maidservant was the children of Shechem, a lot of them, born. And so he knew what he was doing. And one of the things you've always got to look at is families. Curse of relatives. I remember years ago I went to visit a church in, in uh, Birmingham and when I sat in the church in Birmingham I was sitting there, it was a Pentecostal church. I think it was any odd guy, say oh gee, and I was sitting there and I noticed there was a woman that came out and danced. And, you know, there's nothing wrong with women dancing, but this woman was making a show of it, you know? And I thought, oh, goodness me. And then there was other members, and I found out there was something like 25 or 26 of one family, all with a pretense. And it wasn't long before the pastor got thrown out. Family takeover. Hey, the one thing you know is families don't take over for good reasons. They take over for power. They don't take over to bear fruit. They take over to kill off fruit. Always remember that. You know, I always remember one day I was in... Um, Penal, and I walked down the road and I noticed sitting in the car park was a relative of the, the crook a and it was his, 
his um, brother-in-law and they were meeting and I knew God said to me they've set themselves to destroy and I said to the Lord what what shall I do and he said just leave them to it don't do a thing uh, I, I said why and he said because that will happen that was seven years before it happened I used to look at them sitting on a platform and know their purpose and I said to the Lord well why can't we deal with it he said no and you realize I, I often wonder why Jesus never dealt with Judas because he was set to a purpose and that purpose he was going to sit amongst the disciples he was going to do miracles he was going to heal the sick and he was a devil and you say why and I remember my dear friend Dima Shikarian do you know he was betrayed by the men, the executive of the full Gospel Businessmen's Fellowship International, they absolutely slandered him when he had a stroke and was in hospital. Couldn't speak, couldn't move, paralyzed, and he was stuck in this hospital. And they slandered him, they said he'd stolen money. And he was the chairman and the life president of the full gospel businessman. Done work all around the world. And do you know, they voted him out. His enemies that were sitting with him, that he had promoted. They voted him out of his position. And one day a prophetess came to Demas when he came out. It, it's a lovely story. Let me just tell you about it. He was in, in hospital. He was totally paralyzed. He had a stroke and he couldn't move. And he had to be strapped in a wheelchair um, because, you know, he couldn't <laughs> do anything. And um, the, um, it, the, he was taken to the occupational therapy class. Now here he is stacked in a wheelchair, unable to move. Uh, he'd fall out of the chair, you know, he just couldn't do anything. And um, there are about 12 or 14 of them in this so-called occupational therapy. None of them could, they'd all had strokes. And dear old Demas, couldn't do a thing and they were sitting there and the woman that was doing it she was so frustrated there was nothing she could do with them and she looked at them and, and her comment was you know it got them out of the ward for a time and she um, in the end, cried out in frustration. For God's sake, someone do something. And this woman who was dumb, had a stroke, couldn't speak, um, began to sing. He touched me, oh, he touched me. And the joy that filled my soul. This <laughs> woman couldn't speak. Couldn't move. And as she began to sing that, the power of God hit Demas and he stood up out of his wheelchairs all the straps and everything just gave way and he stood up and lifted his hands to heaven and his voice came back and his ability came back um, you know out of the frustrated prayer of one woman and the miracle that woman began to sing you know, um, God is God. And then this prophetess came round to Demas, went home. He'd been in 
two years, two and a half years, and, and he went home. And this woman came to him, prophetess, and said, they'd banned him going in his offices. This is the man who built the whole thing. And so he spoke to this woman and she said, look, she said, they've accused you of stealing the money, using your credit cards to, um, for your own benefit and all the airfares and everything. And, um, you've got no record of it or anything and they won't let you in the office. And he said, that's right. So, well, God woke me in a dream and showed me exactly where all the receipts for the credit cards were stored and it was in a green box and it's in a room and she described the offices and where the room was and it's in a shelf, fourth shelf down uh, and it's there and all the dockets proving that you'd never taken one dollar is there showing what it was spent for. They've lied. And so he got a woman who was still working as a secretary there to go and she went and found the box there. And inside were all the credit card receipts um, you know, the dockets. And so what happened is he went to the Full Gospel Businessmen's Fellowship meeting, the AGM, and he wasn't allowed to speak according to the leadership that had promoted themselves. And dear old Demas had had the stroke and they were surprised he was there. And he sat there. And what they didn't know is he got proof that they were all liars. And so he sat there and they were carrying on the meeting and he said, um, he stood up and he said to the people, excuse me, he said, I'd like to say a word. And they said, you can't say a word. You have no right to say anything. He said, excuse me, in the full gospel businessman's fellowship, declarations, it states that the life president can speak at any meeting at any time. And he gave the place where it was. They looked it up and sure enough it said that. And it, he turned to the people and said, do you want to, me to speak? Uh, and they all said yes. So the board was outvoted. So dear old Demas, got up and he said, well, he said, I've, I've got a screen I want to put up. And he put the screen up. And then he said, well, they said I stole money with my credit cards. He said, what I've got here is photographic copies of all the dockets for all the years I was chairman and president. And he went through it and showed them they'd lied. And then he said, I want a vote taken as life president. What do you want to do? And they voted the whole board out and all the traitors out. <laughs> out. And they voted Demas back into his place. And then they said, um, we want people who are loyal. And dear old Demas, recovered everything. And do you know what they did? They stole all the, these people that were found out to be liars, stole all the um, computer lists of the full gospel businessmen and wrote to them pretending they were full gospel business when they'd been sacked and started having meetings. And when they go to the meeting, they'd find it was under a different name. So corrupt, dear Demas. And I, I went, I, I was over in America and went to stay with him and Rose. Um, and um, dear Demas. Um, and 
it was a year and a half before he passed away to glory. And when he told me the story of what had happened, I was so shocked. And then I came across Abimelech and realized, hey, watch out for half relatives. Watch out for people that come in who aren't real. You know, one of the biggest curses in the church is relatives. One of the worst curses in the church is mother-in-laws, um, you know, um, at least in Britain. Um, when they get in, they want to manipulate things. They want to take charge of what God never put them in charge of. And we want to look, when we see the historical recording, it tells us how people operate. And Jotham got up and spoke and said, hey, this is from God. And Abimelech and the children of Shechem, they separated. Why did they separate? Because God sent an evil spirit to cause havoc. God will bring them down. I like what our dear friend, uh, um, <laughs> can't think of his name now, used to sing. You know, they might seem to have won. Johnny Cash. Johnny Cash. But God will cut them down. In time, God cuts them down. And it's up to him. But he always will. And I think that's what we have to do as Christians, not get overwhelmed by the crookery, because it always happens. Wait, God will cut them down. They won't survive. They never do. God brings them down. And God is in charge of his church. He's building what he wants. And the people that take over and the people that rule, God cuts them down. I've watched big churches with people and in the end God cuts them down. You know, the best thing they can do is die and God can bring it because God is God. Now, will he correct them? No. Will he manifest? No, it's the fig tree produces the figs the grape tree produces the grapes it's the thorns that need burning it's the curse and remember when Adam and Eve fell in sin the curse was the thorns the briars they were the curse the fruit trees they were good you could eat the fruit of every tree except the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. But when the curse came, the ground produced something else, and it was unfruitful. Watch out for the unfruitful people. They're the deadly ones. And watch out for their relatives. And usually they're very critical, and they never respond to the truth. And it's hidden in scripture. Abimelech met his end. All the children of Shechem met their end. Why? God is God. And you know, the people that do it, their end is nigh. God will cut them down. Because God is God. But you need to understand that's how it operates. I remember when Blair was trying to become president of Europe. He thought he was going to take over Europe, Tony Blair. And, and I was praying, God said to me, I'll cut him down. And he did. And if you look at his face today, you see, okay, he's got money. He's grabbed what he wanted but he's lost power. 
Same with Neil Kinnock. He boasted, and my dear friend Archbishop Ida Hosa said he would never live to rule this country, and he didn't. God is God, and he's working out his purposes. And sometimes it seems contrary to God, but it isn't. God is ordering all things after the counsel of his own will. And it's a great mystery. And if you try and figure it out with your intellect, you will stumble. You don't need someone to rule over you. You need to know the word of God. And the word of God is living. Jotham stood, Abimelech had got in, being acknowledged by everyone. But hey, God's word came. God's word revealed what was really happening. It wasn't long before God sent an evil spirit. That will separate them. Sure did. So let us always have hope. I, I look at the world and I say, Lord, you're going to do what you're going to do. It doesn't mean that the Christians will be promoted because the vine is going to produce the grapes. The fig tree is going to produce the figs. The olive tree, the olives. It's the brambles that are the curse. They're the curse of all the earth. Let us always look at that and remember it. God is on the throne and he orders all things after the counsel of his own will. And people will only produce what their nature is, what the seed is. That's why the, when the seed is sown in the earth, the word of God, it has to die in the individual before it'll bear fruit. When the seed falls into the ground and dies, then it brings forth fruit. That's the true word of God. And it's produced by God. And he's the one who sends forth his word to accomplish his purpose. We don't need someone to reign over us. We need the Lord God and Jesus Christ. I was saying to someone recently, you know, um, a pastor was saying, oh, I like to invite Muslims to my church and uh, we can evangelize Muslims. Have them in the church and tell them, hey, a Muslim worships Allah, not God. Jesus Christ and God the Father and God the Holy Spirit, that's God. Allah is a devil. And that's it. It's not the same God. And we've got to be honest about it. We don't pretend that every religion's the same. Buddha, he was overweight. Died of wind, I suppose. Uh, you know, I used to go to a Chinese restaurant and they had this Buddha smiling. It meant to be the spirit of happiness. When I went in there, I used to make him turn it to the wall. I wasn't going to eat my food and enjoy it. I said, the wine gives me happiness. Glass of wine. And the woman was a Christian. She said, but it's, it's just Buddha. I said, he's facing the wall while I'm here. You know, we have to be <coughs> totally clear. We don't compromise with evil. We love God. Amen. And Abimelech should tell you the story of Jotham speaking out. Principle in God. The grapes came from the vine they still came they didn't quit to do power things they did what God said amen I just thought remember they search the scriptures for in them you think you have life and they are they which testify of me but you won't come to me that you might have life life is in Christ and Jesus Christ works things out according to his purpose. And you won't get 
a fig tree producing grapes. You won't get a vine producing bananas. You won't get, you know, the trees with their fruit. Their fruit is their fruit. And do understand that. You can't twist the fruit unless you're one of these stupid people you think you can mix fruits together. God says don't mix the seed. Keep the seed as they are. And that's what's so important. And, and we need to give glory to God. Here it is used so we can understand. We don't need people reigning over us who don't bear the fruit of God's word. And it's God alone who sets the seed. Okay? Does that explain it? Hello? Do you understand what I'm saying? No. Yeah? Okay, let's pray. Father, I just thank you for the truth. We don't need an Abimelech ruling over us. We don't need the thorns and the briars. We need that which is rich in fruit. Lord, let us ever hear your word. You're the true source of all life. And Lord, let us have quickened words that you speak today. Lord, the same things that over the centuries are written about you. We want to hear your voice and follow you alone in Jesus' name. Amen.